What's up guys, Eric here. And in this video, we're gonna be talking about Titan season four, the premiere episodes, episodes one and two titled Lex Luthor and Mother Mayhem. So careful for spoilers. If you're not caught up with Titans this season, you've been warned, let's get into it. So first and foremost, a little housekeeping. Okay, I look at my analytics. If you are watching my channel, and you're not a subscriber, and I see there's a lot of people that do come back and watch my videos who are not subscribed, please consider subscribing to the channel. It helps the channel grow. It helps me in all regards here on YouTube if you actually subscribe. So please consider subscribing and leave a like and leave a comment below. I do appreciate it. And to everybody who's already subscribed, thank you guys. And all of the Team Eric members, you guys are awesome. But now that's out of the way, let's talk about these two episodes of Titans, the premiere episodes. I'm not going to break them down and all that stuff. We're going to deep dive into that at the after party. I just want to give my overall thoughts and opinions and talk about some of the shocking stuff that happened and just how much I enjoyed sort of this new vibe that Titans has. Okay, so let's do that. Let's start out with the new vibe, this like almost soft reboot feeling to the first two episodes that I hope actually continues throughout the season. Now, I was very hard very hard on the first three seasons of Titans, particularly season one and the pacing issues with season three. A lot of stuff was talky talky. And of course we could still get that this season, but we did not get it in the first two episodes. And I'm really happy about that because things seem elevated and this is everything that I wanted Titans to be from the beginning. And it feels like we're finally here in season four. The cinematography in these first two episodes looks absolutely amazing. I love the backdrop, the idea that we're Metropolis instead of Gotham. No offense to Gotham. You guys know I love Batman, but there's not a lot you can do with Gotham really that hasn't been done already. Whereas Metropolis gives them an opportunity to do some stuff that we have I've not seen so there's that and i'm really excited about that because i actually like the feeling and the vibe of all of our characters in this new area because when they were in gotham they sort of mimic the tone and the feel of gotham and in metropolis it's just a different thing and i'm enjoying it hope you're enjoying it you gotta let me know in the comments below if you are if you're not uh but yeah i, I absolutely like it it's again like a soft reboot uh, just a complete vibe switch, and I really love that about this season so far. Now, let's talk a little bit about some of the characters, because we've got quite a few to go over, a lot of them we know from previous seasons. But the first one I want to talk about is someone who kind of shows up and then dips, and that is Lex Luthor. Now, unless there's going to be some sort of flashback or switch down the road with the Lazarus Pit or something to bring him back, Lex Luthor was literally in the show to get killed off, which is quite shocking to be completely honest um all of the stuff leading up to the season had everybody excited they le released the promo photos and everybody just wanted to see what this lex was going to do and he doesn't really get a lot of time to do anything which is sad because i actually like this version i thought he was turning into a really interesting version of lex luther something that we haven't really had on network television and uh, definitely not on a streaming service so was looking forward to that don't know if we're going to get it now considering that he was killed off maybe um but we'll have to see where that goes either way i thought it was a pretty interesting take now superboy has a pretty big story in the first two episodes and i think that's going to be a big story leading throughout the entire season for a moment we thought we were going to see superman but we didn't we got to see a dot flying through space and that was superman uh, i don't know i don't know if we're going to see him this season or not but i was kind of excited thinking we were going to get another version of superman or was it going to be henry was it going to be tyler was brandon routh going to show up i didn't know but it was just a dot and so there we go but i've always loved this version of superboy from the cartoons from the comics this version has always been the most interesting to me because of the backstory the context of who he is the character being a combination of both superman and lex luther and that always to me felt more interesting than either of the other characters separately and i know people are going to be really angry about that don't come for me i still love superman i still love lex but superboy this version of superboy uh has always been really interesting to me so i'm kind of excited that we're getting more about the story and wanting to meet his parents and really just diving in to who he is as a person because he's got a weird background and nobody else really knows what that's like so i'm glad that we're getting an opportunity to see that now let's talk a little bit about a love story that could possibly be happening in the season and that is the controversial love story of tim and Bernard. Now, this is a story from the comics. Granted, it was a more recent run in the comics, but it is something from the comics, which would essentially make it comic accurate. Even if people want to argue about accuracy, look, comic accuracy is overrated. I think you can tell more interesting stories. You don't have to always follow the comics, but in this case, it is comic accurate, even being a more recent story. Uh, Tim is pretty good. I still feel like he's kind of learning 
who he is on the show as well as you know the actor coming into the role but that's okay i'm good with that i think it was fine you know we get to bow staff that kind of the one that pops out like the you know you see all the viral videos where people are spinning that bow staff. like it's one of those but it's a more cool one i guess that's given to him by bernard at the behest of dick so you know maybe is there tricks in or something? I don't know. Anyway, he's got a train. He does a lot of training in the episode. And, um, you know, I'm looking forward to seeing where he goes, you know, whether or not we get a love story. You know me, I don't really care too much about love stories. But I think this one could be quite different considering that it's something we really haven't seen in live action from our DC characters. So you gotta let me know in the comments below if you're looking forward to it or how you feel about this altogether. What do you think of Tim? What do you think of Bernard? We didn't really learn much about Bernard this week, but that's okay. I'm sure we'll learn more about him as the season goes on. Let's talk about the next character that I absolutely love on the show, who I think has been good every season, even when I've had issues with the season, and that is coriander herself i have loved anna in this role i think for me she saved a lot of the seasons for me um because i just think she's a very interesting take on this character of uh starfire i think she just obviously not necessarily comics accurate very different from the comic book character but again like i said like a minute ago comic accuracy is sometimes overrated i think you can get some very cool elseworld versions of characters if you take them in a different direction and with this version of coriander it is very much a different direction and i'm okay with that because i love her in this role and anna is so good she just chews up every scene that she's in and we get to see her working with her new powers which by the way she's going to be super powerful she's not even using a fraction of this new power that she has and so we have to see, and, and also it's the only thing that seems to work against Mother Mayhem, which we're going to talk about her in a moment. Um, so is her story going to tie, how's it going to tie into that? And Azeroth and all of this other, like, how is it going to work? I don't know. My mind is blown, but I'm really excited about it. And that's something that I haven't felt about Titans pretty much since the whole show began. So just that alone between her and Superboy, I'm totally on board. But we also got stuff with Raven. This is probably my third favorite character right now in the series because this feels like the Raven that I've wanted from the beginning. I did not like the fact that Raven was cast so young back in season one and then just kind of drifted off from our characters in seasons two and three. So I'm happy to have her back and using her powers and giving me that same vibe of Raven from the comics and from the animated series. And I just saying that now, after I just talked about comic accuracy, but I do like that we're kind of doing a take on that version and that she's actually getting a chance to use her powers in a very cool and interesting way. It's very important, obviously, because of the stuff going on with Brother Blood and Mother Mayhem and all of that stuff and the snakes bursting out of people's bodies, which, by the way, we still don't know what happened to some of those other snakes. And the weird guy with the bone mask, who I don't know what character that's supposed to be. I'm having a complete and total like brain fart on that one. Um, I should have looked it up beforehand, but we will talk about it in the after party for sure. Uh, but all of that was very cool, and I absolutely enjoyed it. And I thought, you know, this is going to be this is going to be a treat. I'm really excited about that. Let's talk about some of the other side characters that didn't get very much. Um, Gar, obviously, new costume, some weird stuff going on with his powers. It's probably related to what's going on with all of our magic characters. So we're gonna have to wait and see where that goes. But he didn't get a ton to do. Uh, in the first two episodes. So I'm curious to see what they're going to do with him for the rest of the season, considering that there is a love story brooding with him and, you know, with Raven. So we'll have to see where that goes, if that goes anywhere at all. Not totally sure. Um, Dick is Dick. Uh, Nightwing. Just, uh, I have to say, probably one of my favorite things about the this week's, uh, or the two episodes, is we got to see Nightwing fighting in the daytime, which I'm like, I'm so glad that we're not in Gotham, because if we were in Gotham, that would have been a nighttime fight, but it was a daytime fight. We got to see the suit. We got to see some actual fight choreography, and I thought all of that was really good. So I was very excited to see that. That was really good, uh, good stuff. Fighting ninjas is very comic book. I thought, by the way, uh, but I enjoyed that part as well. So then we have the stuff with Brother Blood, who's still sort of building up his story, and we're learning, you know, about him and this idea of wanting to save the world or help the world. So that's going on, and you know, we're it's a tech thing, and I don't I don't know where that story is going, but it's interesting because he's freaking out and he's being manipulated. So we're gonna see what happens with him. And as far as like Mother Mayhem, really the only thing we get with her is we get to see how powerful she is and the fact that she is able to take on all of the Titans pretty much. So that was kind of interesting. And I like the visual effects. That's another thing. Everything feels elevated. Visual effects feel ele elevated. 
Um, cinematography feels elevated. Just everything feels so elevated on these first two episodes that I was at the end of episode one, I could not wait to watch episode two, which for me is wild because I've never felt that way about Titans. So just really, really just solid stuff. And the big cliffhanger we get at the end of the episode, the one that I think is the most important is that Raven has somehow lost her powers, I believe, um, you know, at the end of the episode. And that somehow was done by Mother Mayhem. And, you know, I don't know if it's going to go with something comic booky or not. Uh, we'll have to wait and see. But I just think it's really great. I enjoyed these first two episodes. I am genuinely interested to see if the rest of season four is as good and consistent as these first two episodes. And that's not really a high bar, right? I feel like that's not a high bar because the show for me wasn't as great as it could be or could have been, and now it is. And so I feel like it's elevated itself, so it should be consistent within that. We'll have to wait and see, but I'm loving it. Did I forget anything? I don't know. I didn't take any notes. <laughs> I didn't take any notes. Uh, but I will have notes for tomorrow's after party. So, Or actually, it'll be today's after party because this is coming out on Saturday morning, even though I'm recording it on Friday. There you go. But um, let me know what you thought about these first two episodes of Titans. Did you love it? Did you hate it? Do you feel like it's elevated? Is it the same old, same old? I'm really curious to see what everybody else feels about these first two episodes. Because for me, it was definitely a step up. And it was everything that I wanted from Titans. So really excited for this season. But that's pretty much it. I'm going to get out of here. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching this video and uh, being a part of the Ericverse. Subscribe. What are you waiting for? If you're watching my videos, go ahead and subscribe. Whether you love me or hate me, just do it, okay? Leave a like, leave a comment. I'm out of here. I'll see everybody in the next video. Take care.